Good morning! Welcome to another service at the Movement Church at Home. We're so glad to have you tune in with us this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope you are all nice and comfy. You've got your coffee by your side. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to our family. Wherever you are right now, say hello, leave a friendly comment in the chat below so we know that you're watching. If this is your first time tuning in, Follow us on social media on Facebook at The Movement Church and Instagram at themovement.church to keep up with any exciting news we may have throughout this week. Also, don't forget to share this message and this service to your friends and family. Let's spread God's word to everyone. You never know what a simple click of a button can do to someone's life at this very moment. Now, as we get ready for the message this morning, let's open our hearts and our minds Get your notes ready, get your Bibles prepared. Let's head into God's Word together. But before that, here's the movement news.
Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one true. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from.
Well, good morning, the Movement Church. How's everybody doing? Hey, first of all, I just want to greet all of you, every single one of you again. Happy New Year! I'm just believing that 2022, like Psalm 6511 says, that God will crown your year with a bountiful harvest and all your path will overflow with abundance. Oh, come on, somebody receive that promise of God this morning into your life, into your year this year. It's going to be the best year yet. Believe that together with me. Hey, wherever you are watching from today, from your house, from living room, in the park, with your connect group, I'm just so glad to be with all of you again. And if today this is your first time joining the Movement Church, an online service like this, I just want to say welcome to the Movement family. All right, welcome to the Movement family. Before we go any further to hear the Word of God today, I just want to share a brief encouragement on giving. Are you ready to give this morning? Okay, this morning I want to share something uh, that God has put in my heart. How many of you know that when God gives to you, when God blesses us, He wants to give through us as well. When God gives to you, He wants to give through you as well. God is looking for people that He can use every single day. He looks around and He asks, will you be a cup or will you be a straw? If you are a cup, you just get filled and that's it. But another kind of person says, God, I will be a straw so that when you can channel your blessing through me to other people as well. That's the kind of person that God wants me to bless. That's the kind of person that God wants to bless. People who say, I'm going to be a straw, God. You can channel your blessing through me to other people as well. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 10 to 11, God who supplies the seed for the sower and the bread to eat will also supply you with all the seed you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest from your generosity. He will always make you rich enough to be generous at all times. Listen to this, at all times, not just sometimes, not just when you feel like it at all times so that many will thank God for your gifts which they receive from us. Amen. This promise is built on your willingness, on our willingness to share what God has supplied to us, what God has blessed us with. So the question this morning is, are you willing to pass on God's blessing to others? Are you willing to share, to pass on God's blessing to others as well? Maybe some of you may say this morning, wait a minute, Pastor, I'm not rich enough to be generous. Oh yes, you are. No matter how much or how little you have, you can be generous with it. Because generosity is a matter of heart, not of amount. There's a story if you remember in the Bible about a woman who only had two pennies, yet she gave them away. The idea that I don't have enough to give is a myth because we can always give something. There's always something we can give. The Bible says into the next verse after that, it says verse 12, For this service you perform when you give, when you bless others, when you do this, not only meets the needs of God's people, but also produces an outpouring of gratitude to God as well. Not only that you help others, you meet people's needs, but it also produces a pouring of our gratefulness to God as well. When you're going through a tough time, you could probably you can say, God, I don't have much, but I'm willing to share. I might not have much on my hands, but I'm willing to bless somebody with the little that I have. I only have a little food with me, but I'm willing to invite somebody over for dinner. Church, when you do this, God promises you that first you will grow spiritually, second one, He will use you to meet other people's needs, and last but not least, you will bring Him glory. When you give away what you have, God will open the door of blessing in your life in ways that you cannot imagine as well. Amen. All right, who's ready to give? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are a good, good, faithful Father in life, that you have always supplied or our needs, Lord Jesus. And Father, today we choose to use this seed to be able to be a blessing. And we pray, Lord God, that it will also produce a great harvest for your glory, Lord God. And Father, we use whatever we have, whether it's big or small, Lord Jesus, to be able to be a blessing for others and out of an overflowing of a grateful heart. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of generosity in our life that continues to overflow and continue to use us to be a blessing for others. In Jesus' name, we're ready to pray. We're ready to give. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. All right. In the Movement Church, we want to make giving as easy as possible. So in just a few clicks to give online, you can scan the QR code right now on the screen or go to our website for online giving. So now, who is excited for the Word of God? You know, I hope you're ready, church, for the first sermon of 2022. And I believe the message today from Pastor Chris uh, will bless you and set you up for your best year yet. Amen. Let's go. 
Good morning, Movement Church. Welcome to 2022 and welcome back to an online service. You know, it was really weird because last year there was a lot of lockdowns and, and we had to do this because of lockdown. But this time it wasn't lockdown, but people were infected and people are getting COVID or they had to isolate because they are co close contact. And so a lot of the team are not able to be uh, there to, you know, uh, make it happen. But then we're back on online service. But I love it. I love online service because uh, we know that for a fact that whenever we go on online service, the church grows and people are connected, people are um, tuning in. And so it's okay. It's okay that we are here right now. Okay, amen? Amen. So who is ready for a memorable year? You know, wherever you are right now, we are all bound by His Word and His purpose. Amen. You know, even though all of us are probably living in a COVID era where you have to isolate this, isolate that, mask on, uh, checking in and QR codes and everything. You know, but we're believing that you can still have a great year. You know, last year I saw Pastor Roy Carino's post on Facebook. Um, a baptism service for 70 people. I'm still in awe and, and oh, from what I saw because, you know, I've never seen that before. The, every time I see big crowds of water baptism, they are always a group of tourists in Israel just for the sake of it and going into, not all, obviously some people are there generally, but they are there in Israel on the Jordan River wanting to get baptized and, and, and that's a big crowd. And so seeing 70 people in a baptism during COVID, during restrictions or oh, pandemic, it was really mind blowing. And not to mention the 400 kids in Muntin Lupa, you know, they were ministering to with getting the Jolly, Jolly Co, Jolly Co, I don't know what it's called, uh, like Happy Meal type pack. And 400 kids were getting it, being ministered to. And so despite the conditions of, of the pandemic, not being in Pastor Roy Carino's favor, He's still saving souls and making disciples. You know, but we're believing that 2022 will be even greater. Amen. Last year, I love watching all the testimonies from Sister Nancy, Julian, Cynthia, Mel King, Mel, Mel Ang and, and Kenoy. You know, I believe there will be more testimonies in 2022 because this year could be our greatest year of saving souls and making disciples. Amen? So let's pray and be ready for His Word. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for today that we are all gathered wherever we are, God, whether we are in Australia, Indonesia, Philippines, in the America or Japan or Korea or Israel, wherever we are, we are bound by your word and your purpose. So we thank you that your presence is in the people's hearts, in people's lives, people's homes, and people's uh, community place or wherever they are. But we pray that this word may be translated from one mouth to many lives, that people's hearts may be changed, may people's lives may be transformed, that this word will land on good soil so it can grow, be fruitful, and multiply, Lord. And so we thank you. And I pray that you will speak to people's hearts today, that you will um, reveal something new in people's situations today, because we're believing that your word is alive and it's active. So we thank you, God. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everyone say, Amen. 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 You know, the title of this message is The Keys to the Greatest Year of Your Life. Now I get it. Now, Christians make Christians often make big claims, right? They use over the top adjectives, you know, but I'm sure we all have years that we believed was the greatest year of our life. You know, I used to think 1998 was my greatest year because it was the year where I got baptized. I remember I'm getting baptized, feeling a, a, a new life coming over me with purpose, with with a sense of love and joy and, and, and hope uh, for, for my future. And I thought that was my greatest year. But then 1999 was also a great year because it was the year where I had my first girlfriend. And not only that, but she was the prettiest girl at church. So I felt very pride, 
proud and, and very happy and people always like you know, getting jealous and everything. But, um, but I had the girl, you know, I had the girl. But for you, it could be the year where you discovered that you're pregnant or your wife was pregnant with your first child because that's always an exciting thing to have. For others, it could be the year where you purchased your first property. You, know, you saved up for a lot of years. You probably saved up for five years or six years. You've, you've sacrificed a lot. You gave up on eating out just so you can have your first property. And then when you have that first property, you just enjoy the home, like, like um, at admiring the, the new place. And, and so that could be your first year, the, your greatest year. But whatever it was, I have news for you. Those are not your greatest years. You know, I love what it says in Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. It says, forget the former things. That's why I say those years may not be your greatest years. And Isaiah says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing in your life in 2022. And it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You know, if you want to have your greatest year, it starts by forgetting the former things because God is doing a new thing. Do not dwell on the past, regardless if you had a good past or a bad past. You know, if I stayed with that mindset, I will always compare every year with 2010. It was the year where I got married. 2020 was filled with lockdowns, restrictions, confusion, and everything else. And if I stayed with that mindset, I would always say, if only this year was like 2010. Or whenever you have a bad year, you always say, if only this year was like 2010, then I would have missed out on what God had for me in 2020. Some people always say the best years of my life are behind me. But you know, I want to challenge that. Because the best years of your life, the best years of your ideas, the best years of your marriage, that's right. You may, be, you may have been married for 20 years, but the best years of your marriage, the best years of your breakthrough is not behind you, but it is in front of you. In fact, it could be this year. Do you believe that, church? But it starts from forgetting and not dwelling on the former things. But you're saying, you may be saying, how is that possible? How can we forget or not dwell on it? You know, past time my business partner ran away with my money and I can't forget about that. I need to get even, I need to get back at him. It was a big amount of money. You may, you may be saying, Pastor, my children does not listen to me. How can I not dwell? How can I not think about solution? How can I not worry about this? Because they can get themselves hurt or sick they don't listen to me. I need to find a solution. And you dwell on that all the time. Oh, pastor, my partner and I argue and fight all the time. I think about what they said to me. Like, how could they have said that to me? How rude of them to say that to me. How disrespectful of them to say that to me. And you can always think about that over and over again. But now I have news for you. Now your actions and your choices today may not change your past, but it will definitely shape your future. So if you choose to dwell on the past over and over again, it stays inside your mind and rent free. Like it just stays inside your mind rent free and you're just always complaining about it all the time. Whereas people would have moved on and doing other things, but you're stuck thinking about it all the time. That's your choice. It's a choice that you need to make to change. Because your choice does not change your past, but it will definitely shape your future. And it's possible to not dwell in the past because Isaiah says, tells us that God will make a way in the wilderness. You know, the wilderness is wild. There is no order. Trees are everywhere. Bushes are everywhere. You don't know what kind of animals are living in the wilderness. You don't know what kind of uh, uh, greeneries and, and poisonous uh, plants are living in, in the wilderness, there is no man-made structure. It's a place where you cannot live for too long. Your wilderness is not a place for you to stay. So get ready because this she, God has made a way out of there. 
and God will make streams in the wasteland. What's the difference between wasteland and, and wilderness? Wasteland, there is wilderness, there is life, but it's just out of order. But wasteland, it is a place where things die. There is no life. It is a place that is barren and neglected. There are, I don't know if you've seen those photos, maybe it's being shown right now, but there are this desert where there's cracks on the ground. It's because there is no life. It's a wasteland. Nothing grows. And whatever's there, it just dies. And your wasteland is not a place where, for you to be because your wasteland is a place where there is no progress. But God has provided a stream. You know, the stream is, some, is, is a water that is, that is flowing and running. It's different to lakes and ponds because lakes and ponds, it just sits still. But a stream is, there's a source that come, that there is a source and it goes somewhere. And so whatever is in the stream, it just flows out. So all the dirt, all the junk, everything that, all the branches and all, everything that, that, that is, that gets into the stream just, just flies off to the other side, you know? It just goes to all the way to the other side because, and God is providing a stream in the wasteland. There is a source and everything is flowing out. And I'm believing that God is doing something new in and through you this year. But you have a choice to make. Will you stay in the wilderness or will you step out into a faith-filled life with God, a path that He has provided? You know, I want to talk about three keys to unlocking the greatest year of your life because you deserve that. Amen? Because God has that for your life this year. So three keys to unlocking the greatest year of your life. Number one, it starts with a revelation. You know, having a New Year's resolution is good, but how long does it last? You know, studies have shown that the top four resolution every year is getting fit, losing weight, reading new books, and learning new skills. And every year, it's the same one all the time, like getting fit, losing weight, reading new books, and learning a new skill. In other words, these are great goals to have, but every year, if you don't accomplish it or you don't finish it, it'll just become a new goal for next year, and it just becomes a similar cycle of resolution. Then you won't even bother to make any goals next time because you think, oh, it's not working anymore. Well, the thing is, what we need first and foremost is not a New Year's resolution, but a New Year's revelation. A revelation is the act of revealing and disclosing. You know, so the question is, what is God revealing about your life this year? What direction has God disclosed in your life this year? You know, this time last year, January 2021 last year, um, God wanted us to come to Movement Church. In one of the many signs and confirmations that my wife and I had, um, that God said, it's time for you to go to Movement Church, uh, my wife actually had her Bible like open, uh, closed like that, standing. And, and she said, God, if you want us to go there, you need to show us from the Word, not from other people, not from signs and wonders or anything, but we need to hear, it f- we need to see it from the Word. And so she let go of her hand and the Bible just opened up randomly and it landed on Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 1. And it says in the NLT, it says, Then the Spirit lifted me and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's temple. You know, it was a revelation that led to the greatest year in our life. You know, our wedding day was awesome. 2010 was an awesome year for us. Uh, we, we went on a cruise, we experienced many things and we just loved 2010. But we feel 2021, being in Movement Church, was the greatest year of our life. You know, 2021 was the year where I got my motorbike, my Ducati. It was a lifelong dream that I had for maybe years and years. And in 2021 was the year where I got a motorbike. It was a long life dream to have a motorbike. And in 2021, I got my Ducati and, you know, I asked my wife and she said yes. And two days later, I booked myself for the the L-Test and I actually bought a bike within two weeks because I was that excited. And in 2021, we had the opportunity to serve in kids' church. It was something that we've always loved and always loved doing, but never got the chance. And in 2021, we were part of two awesome connect groups and seeing it grow, 
both in size and the people discovering Jesus more and more was, was beautiful. It was a year when my third child was potty trained. You know, after three years of nappies and after pushing him and asking him, come on, you need to wear it. You're already at preschool. You haven't, you're still in a nappy. It's embarrassing for us. But on that year, it was a massive breakthrough for us seeing him take off his nappy and said, it's okay, I can, I can wear underwear now. And it was in 2021. In 2021, it was the year where we started our business. In fact, we started two businesses and it was something I never thought I could do because, you know, growing up um, after college and everything else, um, I always thought my life was just going to be all about ministry. But then in 2021, Pastor Roy said, you know, you can excel in the ministry and in the marketplace. And so now our cleaning business and our uh, workshop business, it's, it's glo- glo- uh, growing and flourishing. And I even had to cut back and, and, and uh, reject a few, a few um, offers and everything else. And so, and all that happened in 2021. You know, every time we come home from church, we have a big smile on our face. Uh, and, and we always talk about what we learned and who we met, who we talked to and what happened at kids' church, what happened in, in the service, what happened outside. And whenever my wife and I have devotion, we thank God for every single one of you, um, our, the leaders of the church and just people who are in our life, in, in our circles. And we know that God is using every fiber in our being and every energy that we have as we have surrendered our life to the vision of discipleship. And it all started from a revelation. So I want to encourage you to pray and ask God for a revelation for this year because God has prepared a stream in your wasteland and a way in your wilderness. Amen? Amen. The second key that unlocks your greatest year of your life is that we need to move with obedience. Move with obedience and not convenience. So it's so easy to be moving in convenience. But God wants us to walk in obedience. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 33, it says, Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Now, for those of us who feel a bit weary about what this year may may bring, 2022, you don't know what's going to happen. Is it going to be like 2020, 2021? But you know, I have good news for you that your joy is not found in the circumstances as we heard at Christmas. In the same way, your greatest year is not confined in your circumstances. You know, Pastor Roy Karina could have said, there's COVID, we're not supposed to be out or we need to be social distancing and all these things. I have an excuse to not minister to people. It's the convenient way but Pastor Roy, Pastor Gena, and the 15 young people in his team who are his armies didn't stop and didn't slow down. They kept going. In 2021 was also the year where uh, Pastor Alistair and, and Christine and Ari joined forces to create a favorite connect. And they have kept the groups, that, they could have kept the groups that they were in and that they were comfortable with, but they wanted to be obedient to the vision of saving souls and making disciples which made them step out and started to build relationship with new people. In fact, Pastor Alistair was the first person I met other than Pastor Roy and Pastor Jess. Um, And he invited me to gatherings and and introduced me to people and all that. And that happened in 2021 because he and all the team in Favoured and also in Harvest as well, they all heard the call and they moved with obedience and not convenience. Moving in obedience will unlock a great year for you. Amen? Amen. The last key that unlocks your greatest year of your life is that we need to live with conviction. You know, Acts 20, 22, that's right. Acts 20, 22, it says, And now, compelled by the Spirit and obligated by my convictions, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. The, the, the context of the story is that Paul is about to go to Jerusalem where who knows what's going to happen because where he is is actually very comfortable with the people that he knows, but he has to step out because of his conviction. 
and not knowing what was going to happen. And we know that what happened to him in Jerusalem and all that stuff, he got persecuted, he went to jail and everything else. But he lived by his conviction. And I want to share a story, a story about a person with a strong conviction. So when I was in Bible college for probably about, I don't know, 2007 or 2006, um, I remember myself and three of our friends in the, in the recreation room, they have a pool table. And so we were hanging out and playing pool and just enjoying ourselves. You know, because we were theology students, our conversation was very deep. We didn't talk about girls or talk about movies or anything, but we, we were very deep. We would talk, we talked about life, we talked about ministry, we talked about God, what we learned and everything else. And then one of the one of the one of our friends that was there, he asked a very, very, very hard question. And he asked us, so what will you guys do if you know that tomorrow is your last day? And so, you know, we all, we're Christian. we all gave Christian answers. We all gave very deep answers. And we said, some of us, one of us said, you know, I'm going to read the Bible until our last moment, last second. Someone else said, you know, I'm going to pray and, and be on our knees until Jesus comes or until tomorrow is my last day, until my last moment. And then someone else, I think it was me, who said, you know, I'm going to go to the city and I'm going to start screaming to everyone and, and, and tell everyone that, that they need to repent, that they need Jesus and then everything else. And so we all had those kind of answers. But my friend, he actually said something completely different. He said, you know, for me, I will not do anything different. And we're like, what? What do you mean? You're not going to do different. You've got one, you got 24 hours left to live and you're not going to do anything different. You're going to go to college. You're going to do your assignments. And he said, yeah, because I believe that where I am is where God wants me to be. And so if I had to do something different, it means I'm not living the life that God wants from me now. And so we were just blown away. Like we thought, wow, that's true. Like if we are doing something different to what we're doing now. It just means that we, we don't have a conviction that what, we're, what we are doing now is from God or where we are right now is where God wants us to be. And so we were blown by his answers. And I thought about his answers like, like full of, after that and when I went home and I thought, thought about it and I just had a different point of view of life from that point on. And then three weeks later, we came to college, we had chapel uh, like a chapel service. And we noticed that he wasn't there. Like, oh, where's, where's Simon? Where is he? Where's Simo? And then the principal of the college uh, gave an announcement, a very troubling announcement. And he said, Simon had an accident. And the doctors have said that he has lost all feelings on his legs. And so our friend Simon has, became, has become a paraplegic. And so we visited him in the hospital. We heard the story. He had... He went surfing, he had an accident where the surfboard went, like landed on his back um, when he flipped over. And it was, it was like, how did that happen? Like, you're, you're so strong, you're so athletic. And, but the story that changed my life forever is not, was not that, but it's when, he, it's when he found out that he will live his life on the wheelchair. So when the doctor told him that he is a paraplegic, all he did was said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And so when I heard, when I heard that, I was just crying because I thought his conviction in Jesus is stronger than his circumstances. And so he, he changed my life forever. I mean, today he's a married man. He's got two beautiful kids. He has represented Australia in Paralympic basketball. He plays wheelchair rugby and still plays guitar in his local church and even has a few properties under his name. You know, we live, we need to live our life with conviction that he is with us no matter what happens. Amen. We need to live with convictions that he will never leave us nor forsake us. I love the passage that says, in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. We need to live with conviction that my past will no longer hold me down. We need to live with conviction that your life in 2022 is in his hands. 
We need to live with conviction, knowing that whatever may come, may come, but we know that God has a plan for us and a plan not to destroy us, but to, to give us great hope. We need to live with a conviction, knowing that any challenges that may come, that we can face those things. We need to live with conviction, knowing that our prayers with God is not in vain. We need to live with conviction, knowing that every time we pray, every time we seek God, and even though we don't see the answers, even though we don't see the, the outcome, we know that He can hear us. We need to live with conviction, knowing that His, His Spirit is with us and He's guiding us every step of the way. We need to live with conviction that no matter what craziness is happening in this world, He still is in control. You know, this year, who knows what may happen? Who knows what kind of circumstances you may be in? But one thing we know is that when you live by the conviction you have in Jesus, every year can be your greatest year. Amen? Amen. Now we cannot wait to hear more stories in 2022. And we're believing that the Holy Spirit will move more and more in people's lives, in people's groups. And so I want to challenge you to remember that forget the former things and not dwell on the past and start with a new revelation. Let's move in obedience. Let's live with a purposeful conviction, knowing that whatever happens, we know that Jesus is in control. Amen? Amen. So I want to pray for you. So wherever you are right now in this world, whatever situation that you are in, I want to pray for you because I'm, I'm wanting to pray that and believing that Nothing can slow you down. Nothing can hold you back when you have Christ in your life. You know, I want to pray for, for those of you who are maybe confused right now. I want to pray for some of you who may be um, just hurt by what has happened in the past and you're still feeling the pain of what happened. I want to pray for you because I know that the moment you start to hold on to God, the moment you start to forget and not dwell on the past, I'm believing that's where your story and that's where your testimonies will start to birth and, and give being a blessing to other people. Amen? So let me pray for you. If that's you, why don't you just put your right hand into your heart and you say, yes, Chris, it's me. Like things, are, have, 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 uh, things have happened in the past that I did not like or things are happening right now that is making me confused and just I'm losing the joy, I'm losing the focus, I'm losing my faith. This is me right now, Chris. So if that's you, why don't you just put your right hand in your heart so I can pray for you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, for those people who have their hands on their heart, who are declaring this over their life. Lord, I pray that whatever confusion that they may have, that whatever uh, situation that they're in, where the joy may not be there, or the faith is dwindling, or their hope is gone, whether it's about their life or their future. And God, I pray, that 2022 will be a different year for them, Lord. God, I pray that you may move in their hearts, that you may um, reveal new things in, in, their, in their situation, in their story. And God, I pray that these people will, will come out of this, this, this situation that they're in and learn a new thing from you, Lord God, because you have begun a new thing in their life. So we pray, Lord, that you may continue to work in their hearts, that you may continue to move in their life, and that you will transform their life so other people can hear their story and be blessed and be transformed as well. Because we know, Lord, that you move through our stories, that you move through our hearts, that you will move to our life. So I thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' my name we pray. We surrender all those people into your hands. And in Jesus' my name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow, wow, wow. Who is blessed by the Word of God this morning? What a great word from Pastor Chris. Who is ready for your best year yet? You know, church, I want to encourage you. Let's not keep going circles in our New Year resolutions again, but let's lift up. Let's kick off our 2022 with God's revelation. You know, in the beginning of the year like this, it is a perfect time to really soak in God's presence, seek His heart. We want to get His revelation on the direction and vision for our year. 
you know, as humans, we can plan, surely we have to plan, you know, we set goals for every single year, but it's still our human best effort yet. But when God is in it, when His vision is in it, when God's hand of blessing, His favor is upon it, that's what makes all the difference, amen? So I believe this message spoke to some of us this morning, definitely, and if you feel like you need God to lead and guide your life, this is why before we go, we cannot close this service before extending the powerful opportunity invitation to you. Maybe this is your first time tuning in, first time in a church context like this, and you feel God has been talking to you. You might feel a little bit lost in life. You have been worried about the future, the uncertainty of life in this season. My friend, can I tell you that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Right this moment, God is extending this invitation to you today for Him to give you the purpose, the peace, the freedom that you need to live life to the abundance of His promise, to live life to the fullest. If that's you, I want to pray for you this morning. You know, in just a moment, I want to lead you in a simple, simple prayer. It's very simple, but this is a one powerful prayer because as you pray this, you're actually inviting Jesus into your heart as a personal Savior. Are you ready? Why don't you pray together with me and repeat after me, Jesus, I confess that I need you, God. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and thank you for forgiving all my sins. Today, I want to accept your invitation. I ask you to come into my life, Lord. Be my Lord and personal Savior. From today onwards, lead me, guide me to live according to your ways, God. I receive your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have just prayed that prayer for the very, very first time in your life, you have made the best decision in your life. What just happened? Maybe you're asking me this morning. You just invited Jesus, the most powerful force of the universe, and now He lives inside of you. He lives inside of you. He lives in your heart. So what's next from here? We want to encourage you. Be planted in a strong church. Or if you're in the area, the Movement Church is ready to welcome you into family. We would love to know more about you, hear your stories, and get you connected and get you onto your next journey of faith as well. On the screen right now, there's a QR code for you to go and to fill in so one of our leaders can get in touch with you. We want to guide you and be part of your journey with God. Amen. We love you, church. Stay safe in the meantime. Stay well. And we will see you again next week. God bless you all. What a great message. I hope you were all as blessed with that message as I was. However, God's not finished moving. Now is the time where you have the opportunity to further connect with those around you and support each other in applying this message into our lives. Don't be afraid to be open and honest when answering these questions. After all, we're all family here. If you are not already connected with a connect group to discuss these questions with, don't forget to scan the QR code at the end so we can connect you with one of our many connect groups. No matter where you are in the world, we want to get to know you. I hope you all have a very impactful and inspiring group discussions today. Let's encourage one another and share God's love to everyone around you. That's all for now. Have a great weekend. God bless you and see you next week.